Well, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I'm back off the last trip and uh, I'm home for a whole five days before I unfortunately have to go back out for another another two week trip. Um, never mind. But what I want to do, uh, because we're going away for the weekend um, out into the countryside, uh, I do want to have a bit of a play around with uh, a portable ATU. Um, it's something I've been wanting to build for a little while and just haven't had the full chance to do. So now would be a great opportunity. Um, I want to set it up to to be for both 80 and 40 meters. Uh, and if we look at the half wave and the quarter wave dimensions for an antenna, uh, just purely it's uh, 40 meters for half wave on 80 meters, and obviously 20 is half that again. And then for 40 meters, uh, the half wave would be 20 and the quarter wave 10. So I think between the two of them, I'm going to stick with a, an antenna length of uh, approximately 20 meters. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, so that's going to present um, both a high and a low impedance uh, to the antenna tuner. So I'll need some circuit to, to take care of, of um, that sort of very widish range um, of impedances there. Uh, I'll have it up to around 10 watts, um, even though my portable radio is a heck of a lot less than that. But uh, if I go for 10, that gives me a little bit of headroom. So nothing special here in terms of the circuit itself. I'm just going to keep it very simple and just have two components, an inductor, a variable inductor and a, a variable capacitor um, and and uh, like I say two different types of circuits there a parallel type circuit for the high impedance side of the house and then a series for for the low impedance um, so I have just a very simple switch arrangement there with a double pole double throw switch uh, which will allow me then to reconfigure that particular circuit between the two configurations Again, nothing new and startling here. This has been done many times before. It's just I haven't had the chance to actually do it myself and uh, to give it a go. Uh, in terms of the inductor, uh, I elected to use uh, a juck box uh, inductor I had lying around based on the, uh, the T68-2. Um, in this particular case, I managed to squeeze with 22 gauge wire 48 turns onto it. That's, that's the maximum I could get around, uh, which turns out to be around 13 microhenries. I had some thoughts about potentially using a T50-2 uh, just to make it overall a little bit smaller for the packaging but to get the equivalent 13 microhenries I'd have to squeeze 51 turns on uh, so I've elected to say that's probably too many so uh, I'm not going to bother with the T50-2 and I'll just stick with the T60-2 um, The capacitor itself, um, that's just a, a very simple uh, variable capacitor out of an old transistor radio um, given the power levels and then the the, uh, the voltages that will be across those plates, that will be uh, more than suffice for um, a little QRP um, ATU there. So in terms of this weekend actually getting out and playing around, some of the the, uh, the unknowns which will be interesting to see will be uh, the counterpoise. So uh, do I actually need to have a counterpoise hanging off this earth here or do I need an actual earth? Um, and, and will 20 metres be... Uh, appropriate length or sufficient uh, for both 80 and 40 meters so I guess those are the two uh, variables so to speak or the two unknowns which uh, we'll be looking at so the actual circuit there made up just a little uh, a test box here this is certainly not the final product this is just purely for testing we can see there that's the uh, the T68-2 uh, with the 48 turns um, with a tap approximately every uh, 10 turns or so no, no sorry a lot less than that uh, to then allow me to short circuit the half the winding or so to, uh, to vary that, inductant, uh, that inductance the capacitor there nothing special uh, this particular one had two sets of plates which have been paralleled up to give an overall variable capacitance uh, between zero or about 20 odd puff and uh, 300 picofarads uh, and then, like I said before, that simple double pole, double throw switch there just to reconfigure the radio. Uh, so again, not the radio, the AQ between that series and parallel circuit. So uh, this will be what I'll be testing this weekend. Uh, antenna will hang off here, and then the counterpoise uh, will hang off here, and we'll see how it goes. So I'll break uh, the video here, and uh, we will reconvene um, with some actual tests, and we'll see how it goes. We'll see you then. Okay, so we're uh, out here at the moment. We've got the um, it's set up. So what we've got here, we've got the antenna tuner unit, 
um, with us again the uh, SWR meter here, uh, the tuner. We've got the main element there. That element runs out to a tree over there in the distance. Um, that antenna is exactly, or well, roughly, 20 meters long. And then also coming off here off the earth is a, uh, a counterpoise there, which uh, has turned out to be uh, four and a half meters long. I started off with, with half a meter, and then just went on adding half a meter lengths uh, till I got to a point where I could get the SWR right down to uh, sort of that near one. Well, you, you never get to perfectly one, but certainly, uh, certainly very, very, very close. So, four and a half meters seems to be the best option there. Uh, the configuration for both the 80 meter and 40 meter um, configuration for that capacitor there was to have the capacitor in parallel. So if you recall um, from the previous video, it's this configuration here that works for both the um, 80 meter configuration and the 40 meter configuration. So at the moment, uh, we just zoom up there on to over there, should be able to see both the, the capacitors or the antenna tuner and the SWR here. So we'll just look at the frequency. Um, Let's do a spot frequency on, say, the 80 meter band. So let's enter a frequency of halfway through, so 3700, uh, 000, zero. Let's enter that and then start. So now we're transmitting um, on 3.7 megahertz. As we can see there, we can get that uh, SWR quite nicely. So that's currently down on uh, 1.2. And if I was to move that inductor to the very first position, then I can get that down to uh, on my figures here 1.02 so that's uh, certainly pretty good I'm more than happy with that so we now just change the frequency to uh, the 40 meter band so let's do another spot frequency tune let's enter the frequency of say 7100 now let's enter that and we'll start that one got a, oops, got a high SWR there so we'll just tune that down and again right down to 1.02 on the same um, same setting for the inductor which is really good so that means I potentially can do away with um, having a switched inductor uh, but we'll just look around the junk box and see what I can find by way of a switch so that's essentially we have 13 micro henrys and I'm now tapped back um, so I think it's about one two three four five six six turns back which makes that 43 turns 42 turns so uh, all in all I'm really happy with that in fact that capacitor is pretty well maxed out there so if I was to go one setting yeah so it really doesn't matter that one there I've got a lot more sort of variation there in the capacitor to to get that higher frequency down so all in all uh, very happy with uh, how that's turned out um, I think that will make a really good portable tuning unit um, like I said in the first or the first part of the video nothing new there nothing startling um, I'm just debating I'm going to keep that switch in there. I think at this stage of the game I probably will leave it in. Uh, it's nice and small and this doesn't really add much. And I guess at the end of the day it just adds a little bit more versatility. Uh, and I'll just have to think about now what's the best way of actually measuring the output power um, to, to, uh, to make sure we've got the equivalent of a, a low SWR with a meter. Interesting enough, if we were to remove that counterpoise and um, you really can't get that down anywhere near what it was before so it is really quite important to have that that counterpoise there so which is good there we go now we dropped right back down again so uh, all in all a, um, a good little experiment there so happy with that so just recapping that antenna now is 20 meters long and that counterpoise is four and a half meters um, I think that antenna lengthwise is probably going to be okay um, what I may do is play around with potentially a uh, 10 meter, but then I'm sort of a bit reluctant to do that because it makes it that less or uh, less efficient on the uh, the 80 meter band. So I think at this stage of the game, 20 meters for a, uh, a hiking antenna here in New Zealand is certainly quite workable uh, and not too long from being able to string it up uh, from a, a nearby tree back to the tramping hut. Anyway, I'll say 73 is there, and uh, next video we'll get back into uh, rebuilding that SE Speed Radio, and then making a few conversions. 
uh, to get it uh, ready for the hiking season this year. Anyway, I'll say 73s and uh, talk to you soon. Okay, um, just got back home and I've just had a bit of a think about what I'll do for the, um, the meter movement. And I've decided to go with a circuit which you'll see used many times on the internet, which is just a simple uh, Wheatstone bridge. So we've got three, our three known uh, resistors, uh, 50, 50 and 50, and then our unknown uh, resistance here, which is the antenna. Uh, and then if it's in balance, it's in other words, the uh, antenna is presenting uh, 50 ohms here, then there's no um, voltage drop or no potential difference, I should say, between uh, point A here and point B. However, if there's uh, not a 50 ohm being presented here, then we get a potential difference which we'll measure on the meter. Um, this will be a double pole, double throw switch, as you've, it's, uh, it's been used many times. Uh, in normal operation, uh, the, the meter here will be bypassed, and then for the uh, the tuning process, in other words, tuning up the ATU, it'll be into the tune position, um, and then looking for a null on the meter here. Um, I'm gonna build this into, I think this little plastic container here. It's, it's certainly nice and small, and I think should be quite good uh, for that. Um, and I think in terms of components, uh, I'll run with two, for the 50 ohm resistors here, I'm going to run with two uh, 100 1 watt resistors wound in parallel. Uh, just get a little bit more uh, power dissipation there. So um, that's what I'll do for the 250s. I think for that diode there, I did have a look around the junk box and I do have a, a 1N34 still lying around. So I think I might use uh, that for that. Um, otherwise, honestly, I think I'll just get away with using a... Um, uh, 1N4148, uh, 10 nanofarad capacitor there. And then in terms of the meter movement, um, I was thinking about using this this old meter here, but uh, physically it's just a little bit too large. So I think uh, I did have lying around in the box uh, this little meter movement, which I think, if you look at the overall size there, I should be able to make that work quite nicely. Um, I've just opened up and had a look inside and there's no internal shunt resistor there, so it's directly uh, the two terminals at the back are directly onto the coil, so that should work quite nicely, and, and that'll fit beautifully into that little box there, so that's the plan. Um, I think I'll use that, that meter movement there. A uh, little 50k ohm pot, so I have one of those lying around, so that can sit below it. Um, and that's about all, really. And then the other thing, too, will be sitting on the side will be a couple of banana plugs, uh, which allows there to there unscrew them, poke the little wire through there, so it'll be white for the antenna, and then black for the counterpoise. So I think just those sticking out the side down there should be enough. And then uh, the leftover space there should be more than suffice to, to mount both the inductor and the variable capacitor in there. Um, and I think at this stage of the game, I'm not going to mount that through the lid. Um, so it'll be lid off, uh, tune everything up, back into normal operate mode with the double pole, double throw switch. Um, and then the lid goes back on and that'll probably end up being suspended, I suspect, uh, from the antenna. So I think that'll work quite nicely. It'll be nice, light, small, and uh, quite suitable for taking away uh, hiking. So that's the plan. Um, yeah, nothing else too much to report. Uh, I don't think at this stage of the game I'm going to have a, a multi-position switch for the inductor there. Um, I think I might just have a, a simple arrangement here with... Um, either a jumper or, or or something else, very quick and simple, just to select between uh, that first position um, and the second position there. Um, at the moment, I'm only really operating uh, 80, 40, and 20, um, more so 80 and 40 at this stage. So I think you know, not being able to, well, I think at this stage of the game, for this particular configuration, I'm quite happy just to have uh, those two taps there being selected uh, and honestly at the end of the day if uh, we get into some other bands down track then I can always look to rebuild this but for now I think that'll work out really well anyway so I'll say 73s and solder this up and um, continue on with the uh, with the radio uh, the VFO is all built um, for the uh, little um, uh, single sideband hiking radio so that's all done and, and been tested so that's good so uh, I'm disappearing tomorrow on another trip, so hopefully it'll be back. It'll be two weeks away, and then a uh, bit of a spell there to get the old solder melted and start to, to build up some things here in the shack. 
Anyway, I'll say 73s, and um, we'll see you next time. Cheers all.